Welcome back, accountability crew, to the, to the accountability project where we condense the pain of personal growth. This is the accountability project. So, um, it's Sunday. My, my, my video is going to be a little bit shorter this evening. Uh, today, the go-getter. Um, another short chapter, but we, we move forward quite a bit, right? Um, we find out that Bill Peck has been out on the road. Uh, after learning about his product. So he took some time to learn his product. Now he's out on the road, he's making a loop and he is killing it. He is moving the skunk spruce at a higher dollar value than he was told to. Um, he secured five new accounts and he is killing it. Um, and, and so we get to listen in on part of a conversation between Cappy and Skinner. And, and he, Cappy's basically laying into Skinner like, yo, why are you trying to delay paying someone what they're worth? Pull your head out. Pay him now. Is, is he better than the guy he replaced? Yes. Then pay him more than the guy he replaced and pay it to him starting on the day that he got started. Why are you trying to delay this? Um, and then the conversations turn to, to Andrews, the guy they sent to Asia to, to temporarily manage the office. And he's, he's not standing well on his own two feet. And so Cappy basically alludes to um, potentially Bill Peck being the, the next predecessor, but he says he wants to test him. And then he says something mildly ominous and says, I'm going to have him deliver a blue vase. And we don't exactly know what that means yet, um, but it, it feels a little mischievous the way that, that it is phrased. Um, so this, this must be some form of test, um, and we're going to find out more about that as we continue. So... Also, in The Science of Success, Napoleon Hill today was the article 16 from these group of articles. And this article was about time budgeting and money budgeting. And I love the way that they break up time budgeting. So basically what he says is there's three categories of time. There's sleep, which is necessary for your health. And that everyone needs somewhere between 8 and 10, whatever your number is. You need to budget that time and don't tap into it. And then most people need 8 to 10 hours of, of work to do their jobs, to, to, to cover the expenses of life, to, to pay their bills. And, and so he said, ultimately, that leaves 8 to 10 hours of free time, personal time. And most people fill this with garbage. Most people fill this with distraction. Most people don't actually control their free time. Um, and he said that the thing that separates people is when people use their free time to, to develop themselves. Because you can't do self-development during working hours because you should be dedicating your work and energy towards providing whatever skill and service you're being paid to provide it at your profession and your job. And so in those extra hours, you should be dedicating those hours to the pursuit of personal development, growth, uh, increasing your value in the marketplace so that you can become a higher income earner, so that you can develop a business, so that you can improve yourself, whether, whether that's going to college, whether that's going to school, whether that's um, reading books, whether that is being coached and mentored, whether that is building a business, whether that's running a side hustle, whatever it is, you need to be dedicating those hours to getting ahead. Um, and, and, and that decision is what's going to separate people. Um, and, and as, as we just read the, the compound effect, that decision is going to starkly skyrocket in the upward trajectory or the downward trajectory. If you're self-improving and developing, you're going to grow. If you're watching TV, vegging out, not doing anything, you're going to plummet. Um, then they talk about finances they talk about, um, some basic things with finances. And, and this is something I, I wish I had read when I was younger. Cause he talks about if, if you're a single person, you should be saving like crazy because you don't have the same, uh, expenses that, that maybe someone with multiple dependents does. Um, although you may be making the same amount of money you would be making if you were married with kids. Um, so if you're single, you should be squirreling away money like nobody's business and staying ahead of your finances so that you can be prosperous when you get married and have kids. Um, talks about setting aside money for entertainment, setting aside money for 
charity, setting aside money for tithing, setting aside money for food, clothing, and shelter, and, and telling your money where to go instead of being led by your money. Um, so very, very important keys. It doesn't go into a whole lot on the, on the money budgeting, but, but just basically says you should figure out what those percentages of your income are and stick to them. Um, he said, even if, even if it's 5% of your income going into savings, whatever your incomes are, whatever your, your percentages are, figure out what it is and stick to it. Um, but the majority of the time was spent on time budgeting. And I think that's because time is actually more valuable than money. Um, even though most of us are trading our time for money, I think instinctively we still know that our time is more valuable than the money we're getting paid for it. Um, and, and that is something that um, drives me and why I'm, I'm running this channel, why I'm committing to, to my personal growth, why I am um, pursuing developing a, a business outside of my profession. Um, because I know that I am worth more than I will ever get paid in any job. Um, and you should know that about you. So with that, uh, I love you. I appreciate you condense the pain of personal growth and stay accountable.